we're going to be using thermal imaging. So you guys should be able to see me in there, red, orange, and yellow guy. Oh, I can't. It's it's like kind of split half and half down here tonight with with guys and ladies. So normally I say I'm the hottest thing inside the video, <laughs> but you guys can actually take me out tonight because there's more of you. Um, but normally, like what I normally how I explain this is the red, orange, and yellow is the warmest thing inside this video. So the blue and black is what we're looking for. This is a FLIR Pro One. This is what firemen use to actually help save people. So this is the real deal. Like this isn't a phone app. Um, and with that, we're also set up with a blue dot bouncing around the screen that's showing us the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. We're literally looking for cold spots. Like, that's what this guy is here for. Does this capture something every single night? Not necessarily, but when we do capture it, it's a holy shit moment. Pardon my French, but that's usually the best way to explain it. So, um, but with that said, I don't think you've ever, you said that you had one of these. So, no, I haven't. I, I you're going to go haven't. with this guy. We're already recording, just so you know. Mm -hmm. You're going to hold that right handed. I mean, you're going to be able to look at the screen. Right. Yeah, you want to keep it faced at you. Um, so, with that, it is recording. No, you got it right. Perfect. Okay. Um, the red square means that it's recording. I'll give you the cue for starts and stops only because we'll lose footage if we record for too long. Um, so the, the hardware's great, but the software sucks. Okay. So we got to do a few starts and stops. Uh, so let's get out the next device craziness. And what's, what's funny, Mitch, is this is exactly how I met my co-host for the podcast. Is she's an investigator as well on a, on a South Carolina team. Right. And she came down here to learn different tactics. And now she's the co-host on my show. Okay. So, right. And I meet a lot of psychics this way, too. I have, like, this weird circle of friends, guys. I'm just putting it out there. <laughs> I really, really do. All right, so this crazy little GoPro, you should not be able to see me in this little tiny camera. So I, it should be pretty dark. And it's not completely dark out here yet. I know I'm showing you a black screen. How exciting is that? However, let's turn on some lights. Just lit up 24 LED infrared lights. Top is 20, uh, and we call it a torch. And then the bottom, like the camera itself, has four already built into it. Your entire screen should be fully purple. Um, we do this this way with the LEDs because the bulbs kind of give you false positives of things moving around on the screen. Um, this is actually a whole new upgrade between the lighting system and the camera itself. I've caught a, a very solid, like, giant orb on this thing about once a week since I've had it for the past five weeks. This thing has been pretty amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, so we're going to be using a couple of different things going on with this. Uh, but, Jimmy, this one's going to go to you, my friend. So, you don't have to be afraid of it, it's got some weight to it. Um, so now that both cameras, like that. you got it. Now that both cameras are out, I'm gonna kind of give you both the heads up. We're heading to some spaces where there might be parked cars with people walking by. <laughs> we don't film cars, we don't film people. Um, right. Especially, just imagine if your car was in that one. So mm -hmm. if I do it, Andy's coming, you're gonna point yours at the ground, you're playing with a cell phone, basically. Mm -hmm. Because people don't really know what the heck we're doing now. Uh, let's see, let's see, what are we gonna get into next? Yeah, the, uh, the digital it's kind of on the bottom. debating if I wanted to use these tonight, but I think it would be kind of fun. So, this is the Neuralizer from Men in Black. None of you are going to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, see, you're laughing. We're going to have a good time. Lasers. We're using lasers because Jimmy's camera, see people walking by? You don't want to be a YouTuber. <laughs> Jimmy's camera can actually see these lasers like they light up like a Christmas tree in here. So basically what we're looking for is movement no, in between the panel and the ground. Better. So again, we're looking for the movement that's going to come through. Any event we capture that movement, we'll be able to you know, take that still shot and show you exactly what we found. Uh, so we're going to be using two different types of lasers tonight. The second one is going to give us red squares. Uh, in the event we capture something here, I'm going to take the still from the shot from the camera, put that in 3D software, and give you guys a full 3D view of what we caught along with measurements. Now, I've had this red one for about a year now, and it hasn't been able to capture some of the blurry still shots I've been able to capture, but who knows, maybe tonight's our night. Lasers stay on the ground. You're going to have both of them. This one actually has a, a little button you have to hold. Just make sure whenever you have the lasers pointing down, because we're going to stay on the ground for most of the night, um, you're going to keep the edge of it on your toe. That way you can keep them intact, and you want to put them side by side. Don't cross the street. Otherwise, it's just pointless. Yeah, he got like I was supposed to joke. <laughs> um, so, again, you kind of want to, you know, just kind of be casual with it. And we're going to talk more about these at our next location. These are not always safe in every single area. Okay. This, it says, please pull my car. Okay, so perfect. I'll fix it at the next stop. I was waiting for it. That's why I started the recording here. That one's a little finicky, but you got to, like, fix it every other night. So. Wow. Uh, spirit boxes. Let's get into this. Amber needs something to play with. Spirit boxes are a way for us to communicate with the dead. Is everybody here familiar with the spirit box? You guys seem like you're all legit. 
Okay, so normally on your TV shows, it's the white noise crap, right? And then Zach Bagans throws you the BS he thinks he heard trying to convince you of the same thing. Right. Yeah, we're going to be doing that in real time, but with a different method as well. So the different method we're going to be using is I have my spirit boxes slowed down on purpose. I want the radio chatter to come through song lyrics, DJs, commercials. Hmm. If she can make out any of those things, I'll be writing them down. The cool thing is, is that this one's recording. You're all going to get this recording back tomorrow morning after I spot check it on top of everything that Amber hears in real time. In the event that it's relevant, obviously I'll tell you why, and then give you the link to be able to verify that information. You're going to have an earbud in. I'm going to be the only one to hear it in real time. I don't want these back because your earwax is gross, just like everybody else's, and you get to keep that as a souvenir. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get to play with the volume as much as you want to. It doesn't mess up the recording, just so you know. Um, but yeah, this one's going to go to you. So again, you have to undo the twist out of your earbud, and your volume is right here. And we're going to talk more about this gear box in the next time. Because you guys seem like you're a little bit experienced, this one's going to go to you. So a spear box as well? Yep, same one, only it's not going to record. So I'm going to be relying on you, whatever you hear in real time, to be able to write it down. Uh, the reason why I don't record it is because you guys getting four hours of white noise, like, that's that's a little much. So, again, uh, earbuds, you get to keep, your earbuds are first too. Your volume button's right here at the top, in case you've never used an S-Box before. Uh, let's see, let's see. guys need kind of an open air spirit box whenever i'm having like the camera and the lasers in the same party i always like to give like an open air spirit box just because this this isn't always the most exciting piece of the night this is usually about the review but this way you guys can all listen in on avery's device so this is another spirit box but it works completely different this one works by sweeping the fm and am radio stations at the same time now i'm going to set it up to sweep um you know obviously at the same rate but it is going to hopefully try to take out the white noise that Amber and Tammy are hearing and only give you words. Now, with that being said, you're only gonna hear about 10 to 12 terms throughout the entire night. So it's gonna be a matter of, what are those 10 or 12 terms? See how it's kinda like giving us a bunch of static right now? And I just started the sweep just now. So the blinking lights are at the top. On the right hand side is a mute button. So I'm gonna turn the mute button on now at this point so that way I can kinda get through the last device and get through the stories here so we can move on. Um, but again, this way you all can kind of listen in on this and see what's actually coming out. Nick, what's a good sweep rate that you use? Um, it depends like on my group or if it's me solo on my own investigation. Okay. So on something like this, for people that have never used spirit boxes, I keep them as slow as possible. 50? Um, no, that would be no. 350. 350. So the 50 is it's the exact opposite. Okay. So for your like SB7 that you're using, the little guy, right. it's going to be 350 is the slowest rate. Okay. 50 would be the fastest. Gary, you're my technical guy. Oh, man. I'm sure you want to do that? So I'm giving you this one because this way you and Amber can actually share the earbuds and you can both listen in. He's like, oh, do I have to share stuff? All right, so this is an EMF meter. Like you guys have probably seen the K2 blinking light ones on television. This one's way more accurate. I usually use the other K2 meters um, just to try to debunk some things ahead of time. But this one, anything above 2.5 on the top, I want to know what's going on. We're going to debunk some things. You have wire near you, parking meters, that kind of thing. So we'll kind of gauge it that way. The bottom is ambient temperature. If Mitch finds something on his camera, you and I can debunk it or prove it pretty quickly with the ambient probe at the top. The last piece that it has is it has a motion sensor, a rem, at the top of it. So in the event something goes by this antenna, it's going to go off. It's a little weird tonight. So I'm not touching it right now. Obviously it's going off with that green light on the bottom. Now I'm touching it. It's going to give us different tones and different colors. So we're going to talk more about that at our next two stops. Um, just because it can be a little distracting, especially when we're coming in your horses. We don't want to annoy the horses. So for now, just get used to how those numbers move on your red screen. And we're going to talk a lot more with your device. I am going to actually be using a device myself. I normally have a different device set up for this. Uh, but because of limited number of people, I'll just use it on my phone. Um, it's going to re replace an ovulus. Have you guys all seen those on TV? And obvious where it gives you the words, has two little tiny antennas at the top, a little box. So I like to use an app called Ghost Hunting Tools. It has 36,000 terms in it. So again, this is a big ass dictionary. The obvious you guys see on TV only has 2,000 terms in it. This has 18 times the number of amounts. The nice thing I like about this is that it's gonna give us a word list with the time frames, time stamps next to it. So that way it tells me where I need to watch the video, where I need to listen to the spirit box recordings to see if things are actually going to tie together. 
So I'm going to clear out the last time I used this. I was probably just walking around the city trying to find new spots and give you guys the full list. I'll just keep this on in my pocket. We can't get out from time to time. You will get the full word list back because 80% of what comes out of that app is bullshit. It doesn't mean anything. So again, it's about the other 20% that we can actually tie to our location, a person in history, even something going on with one of you. So, bitch is in charge. Go have fun. Let me know what happens. Okay. Amber's like, really? <laughs> yeah. You don't need that. <laughs> All right, so, uh, let me drop something. You guys are gonna make me talk all night, so let me grab a quick drink of water before we get started on why we're actually here. Because Tammy's like, why the hell are we standing on this weird street corner underneath the tree? So nobody can see us, that's why. So, but with that said, Big John's, of course, it's not always closed, it just happens to be Monday. So that's the only reason why it's closed right now. But this place was named after a football player because he owned it. His name was Big John Kennedy. You can't imagine why it's called Big John's, right? He played for the 1947 New York Giants. Wow. This was his place. He used to sit in the back of the bar and he used to tell the bartender if the cadets coming over from the Citadel if they were old enough to drink or not. One night, two guys come in. They're not old enough to drink. Here's the bartender throw them out. They leave pretty angry and they come back the next night and they try to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John sees what's going on. He slams down his beer. He gets up and just starts pounding the hell out of these guys right into the floor. A couple of gunshots go off. John gets shot in the neck but the bullet lands behind him in the wall. John gets up, after being the only one being shot, by the way, goes back to the bartender and tells him to get him another beer, get the two guys on the floor in ambulance. Now, normally, if I tell you that there's a haunted building right behind me, you normally think of some tragic death. What's haunting this place is the bullet hole. It's allegedly still here. If this new renovation of Big John's filled it in, like I suspect that they did, that still means that Big John's blood is in this building. A lot of my guests will go there to eat before they come and see me, and they'll tell me how they had this big, beautiful steak that they couldn't fix before finished because they felt nauseous. People that sit in the front of this bar tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, or headaches. This is kind of your heated warning, everybody. That's the reason why we start here. If anybody feels any of those symptoms throughout the night, I need to know immediately. Like, it's a big deal. So, sneezes don't count. So, <laughs> good. You guys are still laughing. It's good. Um, but again, it, this is the exact reason why we started here. I don't know how paranormal activity is going to affect anybody. Granted, we're going to come across some. So, kind of keep that in mind. Let's get our minds off our own health because I'm guessing mom just looked at me like, what the hell did I sign up for? Put my kids So, we had a big earthquake here in 1886. If you didn't already know that, like I said, if you, that's why I ask if you've taken other history tours. Um, every tour in town talks about it. But this building is allegedly where the first death occurred from that earthquake. Huh. So, a piece of the mantle you see in the middle of the building, also wrapped around the front on the East Bay Street side, broke off from the earthquake, hit somebody in the back of the head and killed them. And apparently you can see his ghost in the middle of the street in the middle of the night. So apparently, I say that apparently a lot with that because I have no proof. It's just a great segue, so Michelle's not thinking about getting sick on the tour. <laughs> so I'm going to take your camera and fix it on our way to our next stop. Fair? Fair enough. All right, let's go ghost hunting, everybody. Let's do this. Do this. No, not yet. I would always be confused for lasers. Sit on the side. Sit on So Nick, I just put my digital recorder on just in case. I figured the more the merrier, right? You never know what, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm game. Cool. Somebody brought dowsing rods for their first time last week. shouldn't but just let me know if it does. All right everybody, welcome to your first stop. So I am going to answer some questions here but let's kind of go through the quick history first. These questions, I'm, I, it's the same questions pretty much on a nightly basis so if you have more questions I'll take them after. So welcome to the big red barn lot. This is where we keep the horses for your pair of drives. I'm sure I smell horses. <laughs> yep. So I'm immune to it. I'm out here seven nights a week except for when I have to call off on Amber. So um, <laughs> it was actually disheartening because I was like man I had this streak going. Um, but anyway. Now um, I'm smelling. 
the history here is really simple and I made it that way on purpose just so we could talk more about your devices. This is the same red barn that held delivery horses that carried milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. So let's talk about spirit boxes. How many do we have in place tonight? So one, two, three, and mine is the four. So we have four spirit boxes in play tonight. So everybody wants to ask the same questions whenever they get a communication device. What do you think that question is? Come on, think of Ouija boards. Know if it's real? Eh, you're not gonna ask a ghost if they're real. Oh. Is it demonic or not? Who is it? <laughs> you know, mainly, think of your movies, Ouija board, is somebody here, right? Is somebody here, okay, yeah. yeah so somebody. it's normally every, what everybody wants to ask, the first right. question. So if Tammy hears the word no, that means somebody's here, just so you guys know. Right. Right. Um, so we are not going to be asking yes and no questions okay. all night long. Mm -hmm. You don't get actual paranormal proof out of yeses and nos unless it's disembodied then you can actually prove it. That's a whole other field trip for all of you. Um, but at any rate, so in a space like this, especially for those of you that have never used the spirit box before, I would tell you to, you know, ask questions you already know the answers to. If somebody's here, tell me what color the big red barn is. Mm. Now, all of you are using radio stations and DJs and lyrics and all that stuff to try to convey messages back to us. The word red might not be available to them, but blood, fire truck, heart, those three things are specifically red. I would take that as an acceptable answer if it was direct. What color is the big red barn? Blood. I'm good. However, most of the night, I'm going to require that there is some kind of two things going on at the same time, whether from the same device or not. What I mean by that is that means that Gary can actually have a reading that's sky high, and all of a sudden we have somebody's full name show up on another spirit box. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I have a word list, dictionary, that it's you know generating words from time to time. That's why 80% of it's gonna be garbage. But we're gonna use my spirit box as the next example. At times, to kind of verify what's going on, um, let's say I have the word art on my spirit box, and then Amber here is the number 40. Neither one of those two terms by themselves mean anything at this location, but put them together, Art Faircloth was number 40 on Big John's team. You guys see where I'm going with this? A lot of these people are going to be from the 17 and 1800s. They all have the same names, George's and Charles's, and, and you, you figure it out. Um, but again, we need to know who the heck we're talking to, and we do that by getting a secondary verifier. You're going to hear me say that a lot. That's cool, but that's a little vague. We're going to wait for something else to pop up with that. Throughout the night, I am going to withhold information from you, purposely. So that way everybody here has a genuine experience. Is that fair? Yeah. I'm all about the real stuff. So, uh, let's see, let's see, cameras. Uh, let's kind of already have the gist on yours. I want to get yours started so we can actually get um, get everybody to work. So, Michelle, point one of your lasers on the ground. I know you're trying to get a piece of gum out. Perfect. So, basically, um, when you guys are filming this, obviously you're going to help with listening in on the spirit box at the same time. This way you guys are all on like multi-duty here. Um, but you don't want to point it down because we already know what the squares look like. You're literally, Jimmy, going to take two steps backwards. So you get a nice little panoramic view. Perfect. Right there. So you guys are going to be anywhere between like two to five feet away from each other. Um, that way you can still listen in. And in the event that Avery actually misses something on his spirit box, the audio will still record it if I'm not nearby. So that way... This is how I kind of work this out with a party of three and then two parties of two. Um, but again, when you guys are moving, you move in sync, nice and slow, people walking by, we kill the lasers, we don't film cars. So that's kind of the gist of it. Now, there are going to be certain spaces, Michelle, where the lasers are kind of out of commission because of where we are. Um, so again, that's where you'll, you'll help Avery with you know what he's listening in on. Um, and then, of course, we're going to do a few experiments with lasers tonight in other locations. So, and you guys can also swap amongst yourselves. So just kind of keep your devices within your own party. Same thing with every other group. So if you guys wanted to switch up or if you two wanted to switch up, feel free to do so. Just make sure it stays within your own party. Uh, Mitch, your camera, you're gonna be looking for two things for us. So obviously the blue and black spots, right? You're gonna be moving around. Right. But I want you to try to keep one of us in view at all times. Okay. We're gonna be the warmest thing out here, which is gonna give you an array of color on right. your screen. It's much easier to find those cold spots if there's a nice warm 97 to 99 degree temperature in there. So that way we can actually see the difference. Okay. The other thing you're gonna to try to do is keep the sky out of view. The sky is no surface. That blue dot bouncing around is looking for surfaces. So it's gonna okay. automatically default to the sky every time it's in view. Sometimes okay. that's gonna be impossible, so just kind of do your best. Okay. Um, that blue dot is not an almighty, like this is what happened, but it is a nice verifier for when things do occur. Um, sometimes I find things that are not on that blue dot, just so you know, we're gonna talk more about that at the very end. All right, I think everybody has a great gist of the devices except for Gary, which I'm gonna show him more at the next location. Are we ready to get away from football players and ponies? Yeah. Because I know sure. I am. Let's go talk about well, some people. I didn't want to interrupt you. What do you got? You were talking. Oh, you're supposed it, to. It jumped to a 2.9 from zero. Over here? Yeah. I didn't even get so close to the of, building. That's why it's kind of moving around. Let's go ahead and get Stop. as close to the building as you can. See if it goes up. Oh, it actually goes away. So I have a 2.9. Okay. I was running at a, a point zero, and then it, uh, 2.1, and then 2.9. 
So anywhere between like two to six is pretty common in here, and they just kind of pop up and they go away, pop up and go away. I've had other ones a little bit higher than that, but it's usually an average of two to six. Um, so again, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not surprised, but I'm not surprised in the fact that it went away and we just verified it's not coming from the building. So but that's pretty good. Um, I don't see any electrical poles around this corner either, so it's, it's pretty good. All right, perfect. Any other readings coming out of that besides that 2.9? Yeah, I just noticed that. Too. All right, let's do this. We're going to head up over this one. I'm taking in weird spots. So, this place, let's talk about it. Let's see what's going on here. So that way you guys kind of know what you're actually getting yourselves into. Um, first off, spirit boxes. I am not going to be giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse, like what we did over there with the red barn. You're going to get the answers from your spirit boxes. So, what is this place? This used to be the Charles and Eliza Pinckney Mansion. Their mansion actually sat in the front of this space, facing East Bay Street. Eliza's garden was lined up with Five Trick Restaurant, came all the way across. And we are standing in the servant and slave quarters for the home, just so everybody kind of has a layout of the land. So who were these people? They had a son named Charles. They had a nephew named Charles. That's three Charleses, because the dad was also named Charles. See why we look for those secondary verifiers? I need to know which Charles we're actually dealing with. So, with that said, the son and the nephew... Sorry, I lost track of thought, because that guy was, like, waving at me. And that's why it was a good one. Um, the son and the nephew were signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. Mm -hmm. Uh, test that wire over there on the wall. See if it goes up any higher. Nothing? Okay, interesting. I like 4.3. So now we're going to escalate it. Tell me anything above 4.3. That way I'm not writing down a trillion numbers. Let's just go as high as we can possibly get it. Um, so we're going to talk about Eliza, the, the wife, just because she's way cooler anyway because I hate politics and I don't want to talk about the Constitution all night, right? Especially in today's world this week. Um, but with that said, Eliza Mary Charles at a young age, according to today's standards, not the colonial times that she came from. So when you guys are asking her how old she was when she got married, you are not going to hear numbers like 12 and 14, just so you know. Um, it is going to be according to today's standards. But she married him because her father over in England thought he was dying. He's trying to bring all of his kids home so he could see them one last time. She didn't think he was dying, so she got married. This is 1744. You don't marry somebody in 1744 for a green card or citizenship. She's from England. So, again, we're not even a country yet, so those things didn't even exist. She did marry him out of love, just so everybody kind of knows and you don't have to poke that bear when you're asking her questions. She was right. Dad did not die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to this space. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. You guys have been in town for at least an hour that I know of. You've seen the word indigo somewhere. Indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes blue jeans blue. The only one, Jimmy, you the only one wearing it tonight? You wearing blue jeans? No? Nobody's wearing blue jeans tonight? What do you got on? Sorry, I always have to point out at least one example because we always have somebody in denim. Tammy. These are white, oh. yeah. but they're jeans. Yeah, but they're jeans. They're jeans, yeah. So that's, they were dyed with indigo. So it actually started right here as far as being a cash crop, but she didn't know what to do with these seeds when she got them. So she had to learn from her slaves how to keep it cultivated in our weird temperatures. It's not always hot here. Once she figured it out, she calls her father and says, Hey, Dad, rice plantation's going downhill. We can make a killing with this indigo. We now have an international businesswoman that helped get our country started. So, pretty big deal. You guys are all here for the weird stuff. That's Eliza's business. Let's get into the weird. So, Eliza is the second wife named Eliza from Charles, back to back. First wife, Eliza, allegedly died in January of 1744. 
some reports will actually say that she died just a few days ago, like June, was that June 21st I found, June, something like that. Um, but again, most reports say that she died in January of 1744. He married the second Eliza in May of 1744. So five months after his wife allegedly dies, he gets married to another Eliza. The weird thing about that whole situation is that both Elizas have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. So if you want to ask her, you know, which Eliza we're dealing with, you can ask which Eliza. Normally I sign that to the person using the spirit box that I'm using tonight, so we'll kind of move on. Um, Avery, I want you to ask Eliza when we separate two questions. Basically, what happened to the mansion and when did that happen? Like, we're looking for specifics. So, again, kind of keep those two questions in the back of your mind. Those are easy ones and you haven't said a word all night, so I want to get you talking. Um, as far as the children go, Amber, I want you going after how many children she had and what their names were. Do not ask any other questions other than that. The reason for that is because there's a tragedy among those kids. If we poke the bear, all activity will stop, including the little tiny EMF readings that Gary's already getting. Um, so kind of stick to those two questions and see if you get answers. I'm giving you the, the hard ones. Eliza's death. Ask her anything you want to. How old she was, what she died uh, from. Are talking the second Eliza? Yes, second, second Eliza. Eliza. Age. How, where she's buried, and what president was a pallbearer at her funeral. So again, try to stick to those four questions. Those of you with earbuds, obviously you can share them with whoever you brought them with. Amber yours is nice and easy because obviously it's, it's open air. Uh, we are going to spend about five to ten minutes in this location, kind of spreading about. I do have to show Gary how to use that REM pod, so I'm going to keep him behind. Um, but lasers need to stay off the of vehicles, and we do not go in between vehicles. We're actually fortunate tonight. We only see about six, maybe seven cars total. Um, we have lots of space we can actually work in, so um, I'll be bouncing around with all of you, kind of seeing what's going on with the spirit boxes or any activity that's being seen in the cameras. So let me work with Gary first, and then I'll be bouncing around with the rest of you. So, uh, Amber, if you want to stay behind too, because I know it's just a two of you, you're really fine, you can do that too. All right, Gary, come on over. Let me show you how to use that thing, man. It's like I'm filming it. <laughs> <laughs> How did you die? Eliza, when did you die?
Eliza what happened to the mansion. This isn't always a yeah. real-time moment. Yeah. Nothing yet. But Nothing the review of this is usually where it gets really, really fun. I can start diving in. Yeah. But I'm sure Nothing. you're learning a whole hell of a lot more about thermodynamics at this point. Yeah. That's, that's, that's and I've seen, just that. so you know, watch the cars. Those will make car uh, our alarms go off, just so you know. They're pretty strong. Sure. <laughs> um, no, thermo, like, I've seen spaces where I actually see something heat up really, really fast. Temperature mm -hmm. is, is fluctuates. It doesn't. It's not created. Right. So if something's heating up super fast in front of me, that mm -hmm. means there's another cold spot being generated nearby. Okay. So if you find something that's heating up really fast, you want to kind of keep focused on that. That's because interesting. Because uh, 109 degrees mm -hmm. right over here. Mm -hmm. I mean that's. Bizarre. It's hanging on to the heat from the sun. Yeah, I got that. Now but underneath. That just seems like it's. Underneath lot. here is going to be mud and gravel. Right. So this is going to cool off the mud cool much quicker. Right. All right. Yeah. Well, 105, but... Um, go ahead and hit the square, and then, you know, it'll turn to a circle. So we're still in the hundreds? No, we just dropped down 80s and 90s. Okay, perfect. Uh, that sounds a little bit more. Yeah, cool. that's right. It was probably a little warm from being in my bag. So, yeah. and at the beginning, until we reset it, kind of get it used to the ambient temperature, there we the go. camera itself is where okay. the thermal imaging is, not in the phone. Right. So, I really need to, like, just keep that thing on the seat with me, but I'll end up forgetting it. Because I don't park near here, I park near the end. Okay. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me follow but, up with Tammy and see how she's doing with hers. All right. Uh, I'll do like two round robins, and mm -hmm. we'll get you guys all the answers. I do use 
actually about two round robins to kind of see if anything's panning out. But so far, you're the only one that's getting, when you get me September, and she gave me fire. Okay. So, but the fire did not happen in September or in March. But Big John was born, born and, and died, died in September. Okay. So, see if you get any numbers out of that. Filming me on there is like, I, I watch this and I'm like, holy shit, I act like an ass sometimes. Because I'm like throwing my hands in the air, I'm like, woohoo, that's good stuff. <laughs> and I'm obviously the hot head, like I'm going to be the warmest thing out here because I'm talking the most. Right. <laughs> This one's 80% crap. So, all right, I'm gonna pull this all to the back again. Go ahead and show your lazy side of the video. Go ahead and show you the GoPro. Go Gary. So, uh, go ahead and show your video. So, go ahead and hit that square. Kind of give your hands a little bit. One I remember the most. Oh, really? Wow. It was pretty wild. Well, you see, I, I had my digital recorder on. I went to a cemetery, as a matter of fact, with uh, a couple of kids. We got nothing all night. Went home. Two or three minutes into the uh, hunt, I didn't hear it, but on the recorder, I said, can you see us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Of course. <laughs> it's as clear as that. <laughs> And 
allowed to go down halfway, it's not, it's not fair for my 10 to try to work around 20 to 60 other people. And that's normally what will happen in the summertime is you groups of 20 down there. So that's why I say normally 20 to 60. It's not fair for them to try to work around us and you know, us move around that. But me talking about that place over there, it stirs up a lot of activity for the rest of our time together because we're going to be relatively close. And it'll bleed over like what we had from Big John's. It happens all the time with that location. As we exit, we're obviously going to stop the video cameras because we're cutting through a neighborhood. We don't want to record in a neighborhood. So if you want to turn around and get a long shot of the alley as you exit, that's perfectly fine too. It's a really cool shot um, on both types of cameras. We never really record when we cut through. Um, and I thought I just saw a flicker, but it was going to be fine. I'm sorry. Can I ask you a question? Or, uh, yeah. The, um, Gary, Gary, is it? Mm -hmm. Could you put that on the ground again and, and kneel like you were? Uh, so right now I'm holding it at a 3.0 since I've stood up. I'm wondering if it's coming from the building behind you then. Well, but why would it run? Okay. Now, okay. the reason I'm doing this, and you'll see it when uh, you play it back, uh -huh. I could not pick, when you got that high reading, I couldn't get you on here. It was just red. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I tried to... Uh, like, he so wasn't there and all was, this blue. Right, he wasn't there. You weren't there. Well, let's hope we didn't lose it because you turned yeah. it off by accident. Yeah, that did uh, not okay. happen the first time. Okay. I assure you, that, that that's not what... I was just getting red, and I'm like, why can I not pick him up? It was very difficult. Eventually, I was able to. And then when I scanned back here, I didn't see anyone here until I landed on you, and then everybody appeared. Well, the other thing I'm going to point out, your finger is very close to the lens. That could be it, maybe. 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, really shouldn't have anything above a 1.1 because there's nothing in those bricks allegedly that's going to give off that kind of charge. Where's the uh, lens? Camera's right here. I don't think it was, but that could be a possibility. I don't think so. I'm just debunking yeah. ahead of time. Yeah, I know. I, I, I don't think so, but that could be it. Anything when higher you, than you, that 14.8? Or is it holding? It's holding right now on 14.4, 14.5. So it's fluctuating a little bit. Interesting. Are we hearing anything on the spirit boxes? You guys got the ears plugged in? Amber, you got anything going on at all? I'm, I'm stoked. I can't tell you how excited that is. Back up to 14.9, 20. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah, should we ask questions? I'm going to go after Christopher since the name popped up. Christopher, can you tell us what year you lived here? We got a lot of boxes here. You can put that answer for me. I normally, I don't think I've ever asked questions about this feature. Because I've only ever gotten the residual stuff. Or Thomas. There's an actual Thomas on here. I want to say it was Christopher Gadsden that lived down here. I don't know the year. What's the fluctuation now, Gary? It's a 13.6.7 and then. So we're, we're sticking between like 12 and a half to 14 and a half. What was the one that had the wand on it that you crossed? It's the same device. Okay. I, I just got Christopher again. Christopher again. Christopher, can you tell us what year you lived here, please? I know it started with an 18. What were the last two numbers of the year you lived here? Of course, I don't have my speaker box on. I got Isabella. And the word lead. You got lead lead. lead. Okay, so we're going to go with the word stop. We're going to take that cue. Hmm. I have stopped, leave, and help. I think we should go. I think we're going to go. <laughs> yeah. It's 
Good night, Christopher. Okay, it's pretty high still. Point six, point eight. Say I'm going to a point six, point seven, just point eight. nine. Mm hmm. Not that I'm saying it out loud, it's very distant. And Tammy, nothing on yours either. I know you've just been kind of in and out. It's not easy to listen to me and those beer boxes at the same time. I'm trying to give you history. But you are right. I do get to do a lot more. I have heard hundred like three times. Very interesting. Hundred. Wow. You know, I, can't, I heard it. Now that you said it's any word or anything, mm -hmm. I heard it once in the parking lot, but twice in my Parking lot back at the Pinkney Mansion. What? What's that? Yeah, it's recording. It's actually, I've heard of the number 300 story, so it's very interesting. The number 300 specifically, is the fact that you've heard it three times might actually bring us back, circle back around. So, behind me stands Philadelphia Alley. This is a very interesting space. It is a very common staple for ghost tours um, in Charleston, but I'm going to tell you the story a lot differently because you're not here to listen to Camp Carter Ghost Tours. You're ghost hunting. My story version of this actually has a lot more detail based on the research I've done, so let's get into it. This used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. So, yeah, very interesting space indeed. Pictures, it's one of the most picturesque places we have, which is why I'm so sad that I can't go down anymore, um, other than by myself <laughs> or with the wife. But anyway, we all tell the story of one duel because we can actually prove that it occurred, so let's get into that. The doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Joseph Brown Ladd. He moves down here because his fiance Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. The attorney that's handling all of Amanda's money thinks that the doctor is just after Amanda's money. So he tells Amanda to get rid of the doctor. Dr. Ladd moves to Charleston to prove that his money is after Amanda's money. The coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a very good start to his day in Charleston. Somebody walking by, his name is Ralph Isaacs. I'm gonna stop on Ralph because again, you're ghost hunting. Initials mean something. Ralph Isaacs has the same initials as where the doctor came from, Rhode Island. R.I. shows up here all the time, but these are the two main characters. So that means I need a secondary clue to verify who the R.I. actually belongs to. It happens all the time. But anyway, Ralph says, dude, you don't want to stay here. He's got a gunman inside. I know him. He's going to try to rob you and kill you and take all your money. But I got some friends at 59 Church Street. You can stay there, and you'll be safe and good to go. The doctor takes him up on the offer. They become friends. The longer the doctor stays in Charleston, the more his practice starts to take off. He's making his own money. Amanda's moving down soon because he's proving his point that he wasn't after her money. He becomes known as the Whistling Doctor. Now, every haunted city you will ever visit in the future has a whistling ghost. I promise you that. It's very cliche. We all have one. But I actually have proof of this one multiple times over. Let's finish up what's going on and I'll tell you how. Now, him and Rothko see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other because the doctor makes more money. That's the way the hierarchy works. He gets better seats in the play. They talk about these plays on the way home. They go see William III one night, and they're arguing over the new actress. The doctor thought she was fantastic. Ralph, not so much. The argument gets a lot more heated when Ralph starts insulting the doctor's fiance back home in Rhode Island, and they go their separate ways. You don't mess with the agent lady, right? Ralph has friends here at the newspaper because he's a local. He goes to his friends, puts an ad in the newspaper, telling the whole city of Charleston what he thinks of the doctor. Dr. Ladd sees this ad and he rebuttals with, let's go to Jewelers Alley and settle this. Somebody's gonna die, right? They come down, they take the tapers, they turn. The doctor pointed his gun in the air and he shot. He did not want to kill his friend. He just wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up to the fight, which is often what happened at the pool. Ralph has his one shot, puts it in the kneecap, on the doctor. The doctor doesn't die either, but Ralph proved his point that he's still pretty pissed off. The doctor drops to the ground, his friends pick him up, carry him home to 59 Church Street where he dies 10 days later. This guy's a doctor. He probably tried to bleed out the bullet himself, but he died regardless. 
No, the campfire part of the story is that you can walk down this alley with a voice recorder and actually get the whistles from the doctor. Here's the interesting thing. I actually get on your spirit boxes songs with whistles in them and the word whistle as I'm telling this story. Now when I say songs with whistles in them, think of Guns N' Roses' Patience. Think of the Marine 5 moves like Jagger. These songs have whistling in them. I don't search for it, it just pops up when we're in this space. I get the word doctor, doctrine, R.I., Amanda, all of the little clues, 59, at the address of where the doctor lived. Very interesting piece of history here. Here's how I got booted out of this piece. That's the fun part. Avery, this is the fun part where I get in trouble, man. Don't you want to hear I got in trouble? Yeah, has it got mm. the So this alley didn't always come all the way through. So the, side, the other side has bricks that are older than the ones we're looking at right here on the edge. Those bricks are sun-dried bricks from slave children. They have one little handprint and fingerprint swipes at the end of this alley. Now, I treat those bricks the same way I do a grave. You're not going to get a whole lot of activity out there because the kid's not staring at the damn bricks. However, everybody one night... Which might have been followed in any... You got whistles. Wow. Like... Like a commercial? Like no, no, it was like... It was a whistle. Like, like a someone's hole. whistling. Interesting. <laughs> Told you. Whistles pop up all the time. Those bricks, everybody wants to put an EMF in your spirit box. You can't. There's no point. November 26th of 2020, my entire group of 10 decided they're going to try to huddle around this brick and try to get some activity. It is outside a gentleman's dining room window of his beautiful mansion. He was not happy with me. Mm -hmm. We are not allowed to residential areas for tours. So I had to follow all the tourism laws, even though this is more of an experience for what you guys were doing. So he came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because dad's getting yelled at. And we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I worked in retail management for over 20 years and took Thanksgiving off that year. So I was happy to do so. The next day after that was November 28th of 2020. Again, I keep telling you the dates. There's a reason for it. I get a phone call from the tourism office asking me to go down halfway like everybody else. Because that's tour. And or to reroute my tour. I decide it's not fair for my team, like I said, to work around 20 to 60 people. I rerouted. However, the story I was about to tell them, I didn't even believe it. So it was a pirate story. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to go see what we can do and kind of wing it. Right? Tickets were much cheaper back then, by the way. <laughs> I can't wing things now. Um, but at the same time, we go up there, and before we leave, somebody hears the name Anne on a spear box. I did not tell them we were going to be investigating the famous female pirate, Anne Bonnie. So we get up there, and I'm like, okay, maybe something actually happened. Somebody else hears the number 300. We were there on November 28th of 2020. Anne Bonnie's uh, pirate trial was November 28th of 1720. Exactly 300 year anniversary of when we were there. Huh. So. I still take you guys up there in hopes that we'll find stuff. It is an hit or miss location. Worst case scenario, I had to read a crap ton of books on pirates, and I'm a vampire guy, so I had to fight through it and learn a whole heck of a lot. I even play video games with pirates, and now I just like to get a different version of the story. <laughs> so everything I will tell you once we get up to the powder magazine is based off of two or more resources of um, as much fact as I can give you, because it's pirates, how accurate it can actually be. So, again, I can't count how many books I've read on pirates and how many movies and, and TV shows I've had to watch, but... It's a crazy story. So, anything you've heard of before we move this space, other than the whistling that I'm super excited about? Oh, you're, you don't have the one that's recording, so hopefully it shows up on somewhere. That would be really cool to see. Oh, mine's know. not recording anything? No. Um, There's only one recording, and that's Anne's. Yeah, it was It was literally someone whistling. Someone whistling. It wasn't a song, cool. it was someone whistling. Well, that'd be cool if it shows up on an audio piece, too. Alright, so the next space we go to, if you guys want to continue recording with your videos, you can. You can definitely listen in with your spirit box along the way. And then we're going to go into some crazy pirate lore and see what we can find out about Anne Bonnie. How about that? Alright, let's do this. You said you got your other camera recording too, Mitch? Um, no, just my uh, digital recorder on. Oh, I got you. So, the digital recorder that I use is a three-way. Yeah. So the mic... This one points directly up at me, and then there's two mics on the side to be able to capture anything on either side of us. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the, the little bag that I found actually right. puts it in there perfect, oh, and nice. it's run by my phone. Okay. So that way, no accidental buttons are getting hit, and it just stays on me the whole night. Right. I hate splicing audio together because it's a pain in the ass. Videos, not so much. You would think it'd be the opposite way around, but audio is, is a lot harder to put together, because it, and it's a longer process. Right. right. So... I've had to do it with that spirit box recording that Tammy and Amber are using, and it sucks. I hate doing it. It takes forever. Like, I let it run overnight, and it takes that long <laughs> for a two-hour right. audio. Right. I, um, not long ago, was in a cemetery, actually. I took a couple of kids. They were just bugging me to go. We weren't <laughs> thinking any activity or nothing. Yeah, 
you really won't get it. Until I went home and... What's that? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> So then I said, I guess I'll listen, see if I caught anything. Two, three minutes into it, I asked, you know, can you hear us? Can you see us? And you hear, of course. That's good stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was... Plain as day. Yeah, plain as day. Tammy, we were, we were in the Stanley Hotel. She got grabbed by an entity, and mm. it was about a uh, about a 20-degree difference between the front of her and the back of her. She, she felt the arms around her. I wish you had a film off of that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 20 degrees though. Like, I normally go 15 degrees or more. Yeah, it was about a 20 degree difference. Yep. From just the front of her to the back of her. This is where I give my shoulders a little break. All right. You got anything going on? These spirit boxes? What have we heard? Anything before I get started? Nothing on yours, Jimmy? Nothing but static? So I will tell you, your spirit box I've had for maybe two and a half months now. The second night I used it, I'm closing things up, gathering devices, and the word pirate comes through as the person using it was handing it to me. And it wasn't like the Pittsburgh Pirates, like a baseball game. It was like, pirate. I'm like, are you kidding me? And that one doesn't record. Luckily, that person was close enough to the thermal imaging camera, and we have the audio. So I was super stoked about that. But, were, you, um, were you close to me when I heard the whistle? Yes. Okay. Well, that's not going to pick up because you're the only one can hear it. It came through on yeah. the earbud. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's not there. Yeah. So this space is very, very odd. And the reason I bring this back here is because the other tours, like the pirate girl that you guys saw that you said, how ironic, um, that's pretty common down here, by the way. Uh, that's why I say it's, it's you know, not ironic at all. They like to cut through. We're just going to stay out of their way. So, uh, if you guys didn't hear anything, which is perfectly fine, I'm just going to break right into where, why we're here and what we're going to be doing. So this is going to be a full-blown investigation. Everything will be in play, including lasers, and I'll give you the safe spots of where we can use those. Um, but we're going to be talking about that little tiny building over there. That's the powder magazine. Um, it held gunpowder for seven different wars and one rebellion, and those are not crosses on that building. Those are earthquake bolts. We talked about the earthquake earlier. Um, and I say the earthquake because it's really the only one we've ever had that had any kind of volume to it. But the basic just behind earthquake bolts is that they're turnbuckles. If we have another earthquake, like what we did in 1886, you can turn them and it's supposed to straighten the building back up again. Mm. It's a great idea. It just doesn't work. Mm. Um, the reason I bring this up is because those are the first set of earthquake bolts that Charleston put in because this is the oldest government building in South Carolina. So it held, gun, like I said, gunpowder. Um, and we are here because it is familiar to the same time period that Ann Bonnie was in Charlestown. So it's kind of like using a toy to attract a child ghost, by the way. It's the same principle. Um, it's along the tour routes of where we're actually allowed to be. And Ann Bonnie, I actually have some activity from her here. But we talked about those Charlestown walls earlier when we were back at the Crazy Lodge Alley where I've had the most activity out of that space ever on a tour. Um, that's where the wall stood, where that garage is. So we're still inside the original Charlestown walls, but I like to point out that the wall went up past the powder magazine and started going south behind me this way towards the battery, putting the gunpowder magazine into the corner on purpose. If a pirate ship or revolutionary warship from three blocks away attacks it, those cannonballs are going to have a hard time getting through the 32-inch thick walls. It's about that thick. So in the event that the cannonball can reach it and go through, the gunpowder blows up, but there's sand in the roof that was put there during its construction to go up in the air and fall to put out the fire of the gunpowder. That's another great idea, but that shit don't work either. We had another powder magazine that was closer to the battery, got exploded, sand up, and building burned to the ground. No longer exists. This one's just never been attacked. It's a museum now. Spend five bucks, get out of the heat, learn a few things about architecture and the crazy wars that it served in. So, this building took 10 years to build. Small building. Does that sound like our government at yeah. all? 10 years, right? So, um, the story now. actually begins right in the middle of its construction. So. 1708, you guys gotta follow me on this one. There's a lot of twists. Gary, you ready? There's some crazy stuff in here. Young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Ann Cormack. She moves here with her father and his mistress. The mistress is her mother. You guys with me so far? Mm -hmm. Jimmy, you got me? Okay, I got you. <laughs> You're looking at me like you had that look, like you had to put the tree together. Um, the three of them are running away from his wife. How angry was she that you gotta get the hell out of your country and land over here? They land in Georgetown. Now. That's about, it's just north of here between us and Myrtle Beach. Dad buys a plantation. Mom dies pretty quickly. That means he has to send young Ann down here to Charlestown to sell anything from the plantation to keep things afloat. That's why we're here. Familiar building. Now, Ann back home in Ireland, kind of a badass. They say she actually killed one of her servants when she was only 10 or 12 years old with a knife to the belly. Again, I'm going to give you a lot of keyword terms in this location. Um, so, 
kind of keep that mentality of Anne as we go through the story. Fast forward, building's done in 1713, pirates are coming through town in 1715. Anne is stoked, she's gonna fall in love. Guy number one, yes, I'm gonna keep tally because there's a handful of them. Guy number one turns out to be James Bond. You can already see where this is going because I've already mentioned her name a few times. Dad doesn't approve because he's a filthy pirate. They run away to Jamaica, they get married, and Cormac becomes Anne Bonny, the famous female pirate of the Golden Age. Now, when they get down there, James Bonny is not the Captain Jack Sparrow she was hoping for. This guy is a privateer, which means he's a spy for the British. He's a coward in her eyes. She falls in love again a few years later. We're going to keep fast forward. This guy's name is John Rackham, a.k.a. Calico Jack. This is the Captain Jack Sparrow character base, just so you guys know. I, I was thinking that in my head. Sounds now, familiar. <laughs> yeah, and there, there's reasons for it. Very quirky guy, like the whole nine yards. But Calico Jack has his own ship and wants to be part of it. You can't put a girl on the crew because girls are bad luck. Sorry, ladies, but that's just the way it works. He makes a deal with her. If you dress like a guy and hide your gender, then you can be part of the crew, but you're going to be a female in my quarters. So she's okay with this because dad used to cross-dress her as a boy back home in Ireland to keep her away from his wife. So she's like, whatever, I'm a pirate, let's go. Most of us are adults here, sorry Avery, but you can put two and two together here. Being a female in his quarters, she's eventually going to get pregnant. You can't have a pregnant pirate dude on the crew. Somebody's going to figure out that she's a girl and Calico Jack's going to be voted on. So that's how it's going to work. So instead, he drops her off in Cuba, go have the baby, come back, figure it out later. She has the baby, but returns with no child. We have no idea what happened to that baby. The other piece of this is that she's dressed like a female, which means she doesn't give a damn anymore about hiding her gender. That makes Jack pretty angry, and while she was away giving birth to Jack's child, he captured another pirate crew and they're down below deck. Anne's gonna go flirting, because that's what Anne does, guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew that Calico Jack just captured. So now we have two females on the same ship, dressed like males, trying to be pirates. This young lady's name is Mary Reed, but went by Mark Reed to be a male. Her and Mary become friends, possibly lovers, we'll never know for certain, and the British find out where they are. They send their entire fleet of ships to take down one ship. Anne and Mary are the only two that are not drunk enough to come up and fight with their one bullet flint locks because they don't know how to use the cannon. So obviously they're gonna get taken. Two ladies trying to take on the entire British army, not gonna work. As they're being arrested, she looks at her captain and her boat and says, Jack, you should have fought like a man instead of being hanged like a dog. The word dog being very prominent here, obviously spirit box word. So other piece of this is that the judge wants to see the two men that fought back so valiantly by themselves after he's already tried and hung Calico Jack and the drunken pirates that wouldn't come up to fight. Hmm. So the two ladies go in front. He thinks they're men. They reveal their gender. He doesn't care. They're still pirates. He's still going to hang them. We plead our bellies was the last thing they said, meaning they're both claiming to be pregnant. You cannot hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It is illegal. He sends them both back to jail, delays the hanging. Dad is still here in Charleston. He has all of his Irish money, he brings Anne home, she remarries, that's husband number two, but guy number four, because we're going to count Mary Reed, because we don't know, and she dies at the age of 84. Yes, very abrupt ending, I know, but after her pirate career, it's complete mystery. Mary Reed died in that Jamaican jail a year later from whatever pirates died from in a Jamaican jail. Hmm. So, I left two things out of here. You guys all know what you're doing with all of your spirit box and laser work by now, but as far as spirit box questions, I'm not going to give you the plethora of questions like what we did over the Pinky Mansion site, because again, we're dealing with pirate lore. But I did leave two facts out on purpose. The name of Calico Jack's ship, and the name of Anne Bonnie's parents. That's the father and his mistress. So, I'm going to steal you guys for one more minute before we spread out. I told you at the beginning of this tour a heated warning about feeling nauseous, dizzy, headache. Back in September of last year, I brought a team back here, about eight or nine people, and it was a nice cool night. We weren't sweating, like we're all glistening foreheads and cheeks right now. The kid next to me goes white as a ghost, starts to drop. His boyfriend picks him up on the other side of him, and we start to carry him over there near that brick wall next to the powder magazine. There's a, there's a little bench there. We sit him down, get him water, feeling better. I then tell the story. It's important to know he doesn't know what you guys now know. I spread everybody out with their devices. They pull me aside. Nick, we got to tell you. We are two transgender males, meaning I had two females dressed as males on my tour, and it made complete sense as to why one of them passed out the minute we entered the space. Hmm. These are the uncanny things that I see all the time. I would say I probably have an odd occurrence about once a month. That's probably one of my most odd, especially hmm. considering the space. That's why I give that heated warning at the very beginning. So here's what we're going to do in here. Cameras, you can go to the front. I actually encourage you guys to go to the front, which means you have to exit the lot, make a left, Mm -hmm. and go to the front of the powder magazine. And show you can put your lasers in the front, just make sure they stay on the ground. Try not to go above the powder magazine, because those are apartments. You'll be shining in somebody's living room. Kind of get a little bit of footage there. Um, 
As far as spare box work, I mean, you're free to go to the front if you want to. I just ask that you stay out of the way of the other tours. Let them tell their part of the history here and move on, mm -hmm. and then you guys can jump in and do whatever you need to do. Obviously, you've got that down. You've been doing great about keeping it on the left, so I don't have to give out your phone number when it's upside down, mm -hmm. which is super great. Um, but let's get those spirit boxes nice and high. Let's see if we can get out of these things. I'm going to go hang out over there by the wall. I'm going to give about five minutes before I do a round robin. If nothing specific is coming up, we'll wrap it up. If, if not, we're going to definitely stay around and see what's going on. This is a, a spot definitely for the, the ramp. So you want to turn that little white button on in the back. You're not going to see a whole lot of readings unless you're near the corners because of the electrical poles. Just so you know. The closer you get to the street, the parking meter is going to make your numbers go off. I'm more after the colors in this location. So go after, and this is the spot I told you where I got a direct answer. Ask Ann Bonnie what color her hair was. Black. Black. Was it black? I heard black. It eh? was not. No. Oh, okay. so you just said black. <laughs> when you that was that. Mary Reeves' hair color. Was black. Now we just, I heard a clear as day too, yeah. black. Very huh. interesting. Could have been. It'll be on somebody's audio. You're getting flickering colors. And can you tell us what color your hair was? Reset. I heard 100 again. You like that number 100. And can you tell us what color your hair is? Use this box with the metal stick. Show us again, just like you did last week for me. Any numbers? Okay. Amber, how's your spirit box working? Sorry, I'm not getting anything. You're not getting anything? I'm going to go to the floor. It's so accurate.
thing? Possibly not. No. Anna, you here? Got anything? Got well, anything? Anything? I don't know if thunder means anything, but I've, I've heard thunder about four times. Um, I'm not. I'm trying to like not listen to the radio stuff. I'm trying right. to listen to the yeah. Well, the yeah. Stuff so in gotta, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I. I he kept on saying he hits 100, right? like, you know, lightning 100, you know. Right, right. Well, I've heard yeah. Bible a million times, too, but yeah. there's probably a lot of Christian stations right. in this part of the country.
Does it thunder mean anything? And I'm going to write it down anyway because you heard it very specifically. You heard thunder or the word thunder? I heard the word thunder okay. about three different times. Wow. Was it through a song? No. Oh, not I, th I try not to listen. I try to listen to the in between, the white noise in between the radio stuff. Okay. And see what I can pick up there. Interesting stuff. All right, we're going to head back to the wall. Did you get any white lines through your camera while you were filming at all? No. The loves to act up in this location. Oh, really? Yeah. Who does? That camera. The camera. Oh. The camera acts white all lines. kinds of goofy ways. No. Like I'll get white lines, and then if they're filming somebody with a spirit box, the spirit box will stop working. I've had that happen twice. Hmm. We walk away from a certain area, and it starts working again with all the buttons pushed to record. And I, I don't have any deference in the recording itself. Like, they're not separated in any way. It's hmm. the weirdest thing. And it's happened twice to me. Which is why I have two of them. Because I right. ordered one to back it up. But right. I haven't had that issue probably for a year now. Mm-hmm. And as she was doing it, it said higher. Let me show you why it's saying that. Go ahead and turn your lasers. Let's come on over. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, it's a yeah, we're going to definitely keep this going on right now. Um, I'm going to show you why that just said ball. Wow, wow, wow. This is an impressive group, by the way. This is our, our last stop, just in case you guys were wondering. I know I didn't announce that, and I normally do, and I apologize if I didn't. Um, so this video, I, you're going to have to huddle around just because um, it gets a little dark. Not my video. Why can't you play the video? Play it every night. What in the world is going on? Alright, I guess I'm going to show you on my phone. So it's at this location. Um, ooh, getting all kinds of weird things over here. Well, the spirit box that I have works best over here. I get a lot more. Yeah. Like when you and I were standing over here and we were getting... Mm -hmm. It's just a better reception coming through. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to find. Uh, let's see what I got. So, let's see if it'll flip. Nice. So basically, I want you guys to look. We're standing, this is right at the wall. A little higher on the wall, right behind me. I want you to keep your eye there. Oh, oh that orb. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That was caught with the, on the second or third night that I got the new upgrade on that camera. Hmm. Um, so, in, in case you missed it, like it's, this is probably one of the best orbs I've ever caught was with this particular. So I'm hoping to capture something with the motion. We've actually been doing this experiment a lot more. Um, it is playing. There it is. I mean, that yeah. thing's giant. Yeah. Like, that's a big ass warp. Um, or a BAO, as they say in the business. <laughs> BAO. <laughs> um, I will tell you, we're up to 93 terms on my word list, uh, which is actually quite a bit for, you know, I, don't, I didn't look at the time span that we've actually spent together, but I'm going to get you guys the answers. Um, as far as uh, things I'm excited about here, um, I think I told some of you already, we got the word July on my word list while we were back at Philadelphia Alley. The number seven shows up here twice often due to the doctor's birthday, July 7th, so 7-7. Seven, seven. So I'm almost going to guarantee that there's going to be another seven in a recording somewhere, whether it be audio or the regular spirit box recording. Um, obviously, the word wall is very prominent here because we're, you know, and then you got higher, almost like you're supposed to be up a little bit higher. So I'm hoping we're going to capture some activity right here. Um, while we're recording that, but I do have the word Christianity here, but I also got the term Black Mass. So, again, what's weird is we got the, we were just talk, we were talking about the word beard, right? So I had the word beard back at Pinkney Mansion site, and then we had the word black. So, again, Blackbeard did spend time in Charleston, but it's a little too far apart for me to say that that's coming together as Blackbeard. Like, I would meet, need them a little bit closer together to, for that, but I do have Black Mass, and you heard the word black. So again, I'm going to try to speed through the answers here, just because we've gotten some negative stuff tonight, and that, that's a little concerning, especially with, with a new moon here. Um, and we got the word regime reset. We also got the color red that showed up on the rem, which is very odd, which I discussed that with somebody about that red rem. Um, we don't normally see the color red on there, because that means somebody's touching that antenna. 
Um, so kind of take that for what it's worth. Um, he did get it here, and that is the color of Anne Bonnie's hair. It is the color red. So very cool stuff, right? So let's go through the Anne Bonnie stuff. Uh, did anybody hear anything else crazy that I need to kind of explain to the group of what those terms actually mean? This was actually pretty decent here. Again, this is a hit or miss location. We never know what we're gonna well, actually get here. What'd you get? We had heard Henry together, and you oh, said yeah. it wasn't anything to do with Anne, but it was, it was location. So relevant. here's the funny thing. I've actually been um, we've been getting terms around Henry Lawrence Pinckney over here because he's buried on the at the cemetery on the other side of the pink of this powder magazine. So Henry Lawrence Pinckney is the great nephew of Eliza Pinckney, and he started a newspaper called the Mercury. So I'll get Henry, Lauren, and uh, Mercury all in one night for you know spirit box activity. However, it's in a cemetery, and I don't have access. Only our corporate tour company in town has access to it, unfortunately. So we do have Henry that show up. So of course, if things pop up around that, I'll give you a little bit of a bio and your links to be able to see what he looks like. Um, and Bonnie, this is one of the few pictures you can find of her with a shirt on. We do get teenage boys on this tour, and I don't need angry moms. <laughs> so, this is one of the few shirts. The reason why she used to go topless is because she used to bare a breast to show the men she killed that they were just killed by a woman. I told you, this chick was pretty hardcore. So, uh, this is a basic gist of what she looked like. This is somebody's painting and depiction of her. Mm. I have seen other pictures of her where she looks a little manly, where she could have been passed off as a man on, on a pirate ship. Um, her parents' names, William Cormack and Mary Brennan. None of you were expecting a second Mary. So we had Mary Reed, the friend slash lover, but we also have Mary Brennan. So again, I need another clue. Again, I, do, I did that on purpose, so that way you guys weren't expecting it. Um, the other thing I like to show you at this location is Calico Jack, just because he is based off the real Captain Jack Sparrow character. But this is Calico Jack. He was named that because of the jackets he wore. He stole them from the British captains he killed. Calico Jack. Johnny Sepp's way better looking than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I just finished a series called Black Sails. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this TV show. Um, it is yeah, very graphic, um, but it is all about this golden age of piracy, and it tells a different version of Anne Bonny and Calico Jack's story, but the character they chose for Calico Jack was phenomenal. So if you have the chance to watch this show called Black Sails, it is absolutely amazing. Um, but again, very, very graphic. Definitely not recommended for 14. Like, my 15-year-old asked if she can watch it, and I said, no, not happening. Um, the name of his ship, the Kingston. I don't expect Kingston to come through unless it's through a disembodied voice, uh, like on Jimmy's device, where the other pieces would be the word king would actually suffice in this location. I am very excited about the color red showing up again and all of the flickering lights that Gary got. Great job with that device, by the way. Um, that device is not always the easiest thing to use, and you actually got quite a bit of activity out of it and the highest readings I've ever seen out of Lodge Allen, so... Kudos to you, sir. Great job. He's like, haha, where's the applause? <laughs> um, as far as the rest of you, like, this was a fun group. I don't feel like we had a skeptic in the whole house, which is awesome for me. I didn't get heckled. That's always great, too. Um, but you guys all had fun, and you all brought your own base knowledge. So at this point, I will start collecting devices, but I want